Hey guys, it's Sam for Digital Meet again, and um, in this tutorial, I'm going to be continuing uh, the series that I've been doing on the dynamic connectors. Um, in this one, I'll be covering quite a few of them. We're going to cover the slider, the twist slider, the planar, and the box, um, because they're almost variants on the same sort of theme. So, again, let's st uh, stop waffling and get on with it. So, if we go up to the simulate tag, um, and choose uh, go to dynamics choose the connector we get our connector there now i'm just going to create a couple of cubes here okay and i'm going to go into the top view and just move one of the cubes on the x uh, do, 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 do. yeah that's fine actually i'll move it on the z i'm going to uh, hold shift so it's even better Move it that way and hold shift so it snaps to our grid points. Uh, okay, let's move it 300 that way. We'll grab the other cube and move it 300 the other way. There we go. Okay, so that's a total of 600 in the, in the gap there. Okay, so let's have a look at our connector. First of all, uh, let's change it. If you've been watching the previous tutorials, you know that I've covered the hinge card and ball and socket and ragdoll. So if you've not watched them, go back and have a look. Okay, the first one's the slider. So let's change that. Now, here we go. Now, basically, it's an object that can, well, as the name, <laughs> as the name lets you know, it's an object that can slide up and down this, um, this direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the uh, first cube. In fact, I'm going to make this that cube. I'm just going to swap it around. Okay. Right. So I'm going to put choose the connector. Put cube one in A. In fact, I'm going to rename this A. Fine. And this one is going to be B. And in fact, I think I'm going to resize them as well. So let's just make this a hundred centimeters across the board. There we go. So in the connector, A goes into object A, B goes into object B. And uh, we also need these um, objects to be dynamic in some way. So on object A, I'm going to right click go down to simulation tags and make this a collider body because we don't want it to fall or be affected by gravity and then with b i'm going to right click simulation tags and rigid body okay so if i press play now bugger all happens let me just stay there and that's fine um okay so what i'm going to do is actually animate a so what we got we've got 10 seconds there let's make this so we've got three seconds so let's make it 10 um and i'm going to keyframe the beginning and then somewhere around the nine second mark come on there we go i'm gonna uh rotate it so let's rotate it this way first and then a little bit this way okay that should be enough I'll rewind it and we'll select the slider and you can see exactly what's going on okay so it goes up the other one slides towards it and goes straight through and it carries on into oblivion and there's a couple of ways we can stop that from happening we've got a lower um, rewind it to the start we've got a lower limit z here so if you put that onto minus 200, you'll see that it probably shoots it off the end. Yeah. So we actually want to make that a little bit longer. Let's make that 400. So that pushes it that way. There we go. Ooh, off you go. And then for the other one, uh, the upper limit, if you turn that on and we can make that 400 in the other direction. You can see that it's poking out the back of the um, cube A. So this will probably go through and then stop when it gets to the bottom there. Yeah, it does. So we can actually just rein this in until 
it gets to where we want it to stop, which is about there. So now if we play it, it should stop when it gets to there. Yeah, perfect. Um, maybe rain it in a little bit more if you want a slight separation, maybe. Okay, there you go. So that's pretty much what the slider does. It um, allows objects to stay, um, sort of attach two objects on a slider, kind of like an abacus in a way. Um, um, so it can only travel in that direction, that line moving through both objects. Um, is the line that it will always travel down so it keeps it there so you could see how that would be useful like I said you could build an abacus in fact I might do that in a bit um, so that's pretty much what the slider does now let's flip this over because we can actually utilize the same animation for the next one which is the twist slider now you'll notice that with a normal slider it travels along and even though it's leaning this way in the x direction um, this stays per it stays in line not only in the z uh, direction in its direction of travel but also in the x y um, rotation uh, there is none so it rotates with this shape it keeps its rotation and now that that's where the twist slider comes in and uh, if we connect, uh, select our connector and choose twist slider, you can see that this now turns to a circle. So it's pretty much the same thing again. You can see that it's, it's kept our lower and upper limits from before. And um, you'll see that it's actually rotating round now. So it's got the freedom to move around this uh, Z axis, rotate around, around it. Whereas the slider doesn't give you that option. And actually, just to um, demonstrate as well, we've got an angular limit here. So we can actually say how far it can rotate. Um, let's wind it back. Uh, so from. So you can see you can actually restrict its movement in that rotation there. I'm going to take that off for a minute. Um, and just to show, I'm going to go back to the regular slider and turn off these limits and turn off ignore collisions. So now it will see the collision when it gets to the other box. You can actually use the physics to determine whether it's touching or not. There you go. And you get a bit of bounce there as well. Great. So if we go back to the twist slider now, it should be the same story, but it's got the freedom to twist round. And we get a bit of bounce there. Okay, so that's the only difference between them really is the fact that it's got the freedom to move around that axis. Okay, so the next one, it is the planar. Okay. Okay, let's just play it, see what happens. Okay, so not only has it got the freedom to slide up and down the Z, but it can slide in the X as well. Right, first of all, we don't want it falling off the end. Um, Usually, because ignore collisions is off, this would hit that and stop it from going off the end, but it doesn't hit it. So the first thing we need to do is stop this from uh, moving too far along the X axis. So let's, um, let's turn this on and this on, and you can see it restricts its movement in the X now. So it'll fall down here, boom, and it will stop. But we need to restrict its movement in the Z axis. So that's for this end up here. And uh, if we do the lower limit, that should stop it from going off the edge. So not only does it slide there, but it will stop when it gets to there. So again, you could see how that would be. Just have a look from this view. So it would slide off, boom, boom. Now that'd be quite good. Uh, if you've ever seen a um, graphic design easel, uh, where you've got the two rulers that um, intersect and you, you can move it up and down the page and left and right. It kind of reminded me of that a little bit. Um, so you can see there how, you know, that movement could be quite handy. Okay, so the next one, 
that is the box. So it's, it's basically this, but with the Z axis coming into play as well. So, uh, sorry, the Y. So let's choose that. There we go. We've got the box there now. Obviously, it's just going to fall off forever. So we need to restrict its movement on the Y. So we can do it like this. So now it can move in all of the axes. Now it can move up and down. Let me take this grid off because that's uh, kind of annoying. So it can move, you know, up and down in the plus and minus Y and the X and the Z. So boom, goes to the bottom. Then it starts to fall in the X and the Z. So we can actually get some quite complex movement going on there. So that that's what these uh, dynamic connectors connectors do. Excellent. So in the in the spirit of uh, actually making something, let's make an abacus because I think that'd be easy. I didn't actually um I didn't actually uh, do 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 attempt to do this before the tutorial so if I muck up you'll have to forgive me but I don't think it's going to be too harsh to be honest um, we'll make it really simple as well so let's drag this out here like that let's okay let's uh, let's make a copy of this and drag it up and then okay so we've got our We've got a top and bottom of our abacuses. Let's also make this a little bit thinner as well. So let's make this 150 and 150. Okay. Okay, so we've got these two things which I'm going to make editable. I'm going to connect them together. So um, they're one object. Uh, okay. And I'm also going to turn on my lines. I, I prefer that working that way. There we go. Okay, so let's mm. let's get a uh, connector in there, and what are we going to do? What are we going to connect? Well, I think we got our cube. And we've got our connector. Let's okay. Let's make this a slider, and then let's actually orientate this in the correct way. Um, but -da 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 -da, there's actually no option for that, which is strange. So let's uh, rotate that ninety degrees so it's up and down. So that's good. And. Um, I'm just going to go into my side view. I'm actually going to just shift it up so it's... Oh, okay, it doesn't snap to my grid points. It's auto-snapping. Okay, that's fine. It's not going to mean too much. In fact, I can zero out of there. That's fine. Okay, let's go back to a normal view. Now, how am I going to go about this? Do, 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 do. Okay. Let's get a cylinder. Let's uh, put it in a cloner, actually. So a cloner object. Let's whack our cylinder in it. Um, let's select our cloner. And instead of that way, we will drag our cloner up and we will do it in the X. We'll also make our cylinder 18 rotational segments. We don't need all those others. And we will affect the height as well so they're longer. And we will also make the radius a lot thinner. There we go. And then I'm going to drag the entire cloned thing over to the edge here. Do, 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 do. And let's have a look. I think the height's a little bit too high. Let's just bring that down a bit. Go back into the cloner. Step up the clones. Um, bring the amount of the spread in the X direction down. 
maybe to something like this. Add some more. I think seven should do it. I'll just bring them in a little bit. There we go. And then, okay, so we've got the beginnings of an abacus there. So let's make this editable. Uh, select all these actually and connect all the objects, drag them out of this, get rid of the null, and uh, these two things we can connect and delete. So now we've got a solid abacus there. Okay, right. Now, let's just rename this body. I'm figuring this out on the fly, guys, so uh, there might be a few bits that uh, you've had to cut out or you'll have to suffer through. But I think I think this might work. Let's get a cloner. Um, let's get one of these, a sphere. Doesn't need that many segments, plus it'll bring our simulation time down. They render perfect anyway, so that's fine. Um, and I'm going to put this in the cloner. And again, I'm going to do, 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 do. I am going to, let's see, zero this out. I think it was seven we had last time, wasn't it? Seven, uh, not in the Y, in the X. Spread them out like that. Go into my side view again. Line these up with, well, line the center of this up with my cylinder from before come on get in there yeah somewhere like that that'll do and then uh spread these out so they fit mm. okay not so much um one two three four five six seven eight oh that's why because there's eight <laughs> okay that's fine Drag them in. Okay, so the center of these should be in the middle of these now. That's good. Um, and then bring our cloner up. Now I'm hoping that if I put these to the top, maybe. Hmm. Maybe I could. So they're not linear. Okay, so maybe like this then. So there's eight. They're spreading out. Okay. Sorry about this, guys. I was just thinking about something. So we've got eight there. That's not bad. That's all right. And then we can make it so there's a couple of rows. Spread them out a bit. There we go. In fact, I'm just going to do two because then... Yeah, that'd be good. There we go. Okay, so we've got them all lined up. <clears throat> now, I hope this works. Um, so what we need is, on the body, we need a collider body. Although, if I wanted to do this properly, I'd have to make a hole through the middle of these clones, but I'm just going to use limits. So I'm going to make this a collider body. Um, and the clone, I'm going to make a rigid body. And then the collision, I'm going to say that all the children, no, I'm going to say that all for the individual elements inside the clone. So now with the connector, um, I'm just going to put it in and see what happens actually. I'm going to put the cloner in there. So, okay, it's, it accepts the cloner. Okay, it doesn't like that. Uh, ignore collisions on as well. That's That's interesting. Okay, guys, I'm back. Uh, I think I've figured it out. So, but, um, 
basically what what needs to happen is this is the setup you need um, before when I was looking at the connector I had the display like this so you only saw one of them I put always visible on and then it shows the fact that it's been cloned um, so what you have to do is you have to in the connector you have to take the connector and the sphere and put it in a null object and then put that inside the cloner um, and then in the connector object you say that the object B is the sphere and object A is the body um, and then what it does is it clones the sphere and the connector well it clones this null actually and you can see that I've set up the limits to the connector so it's like this now I don't actually know if this works in terms of um, being able to move the body around so why don't we actually try that now let's put a key at the beginning and then at about nine seconds we'll have this thing rotate around although I don't like where its pivot is I've got to be honest so let's move that Oh, okay. That's interesting. Okay, maybe we won't then. Maybe I'll just zoom out a bit. And we'll rotate this so it's like this. Okay, and then we'll take it back to the beginning. And then we'll play it. Okay, no, that works. That actually works fine. And each one of those moves individually. Great, that's exactly what we wanted. That's a bit of a relief actually because it would be really annoying if you had to set up a connector and a sphere for each one of these now the only downside to this is say i wanted um uh, another row of these balls here the issue that i then have let's see if we've got ignore collisions on we have let's let's bring those off okay so it actually sees the collisions now um, obviously if we had the straights in there we, that we had to begin with um, having ignore collisions off wouldn't be good because it would actually um, go mad because there'd be an object through the other object there'd be an intersection so you'd have to cut holes out of those spheres um, top and bottom now I'll show you what I mean by the issue so if I go into the null and then say that we want two layers the problem with that is it also creates two copies of these connectors as well so let's have a look ah actually it might not be a problem it's actually working out all right that in fact if i turn these limits off it doesn't matter that there's no limits because we've got no collisions on anyway so that's actually worked out great so that means that we can actually um up these clones spread them out a little bit more bring the cloner itself down okay so that should work out great now yep oh that's excellent so there we go if we go back to the connector and turn off the display always you can see that it's holding all those there so that's fine that's absolutely fine but like i said if we did keep those cylinders there like we did before in fact what I'm, i might do that i might do that now actually okay so what i'm going to do is make a copy of this cloner gut out the null and everything in it add a cylinder like we did before da -da 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 -da. okay there's the cylinder we'll whack that in the cloner object okay um this cloner it only needs to be one there and if we go to this view uh, i think that'll be fine for what we need but obviously these cylinders are going to have to be 18 segments they're going to have to be a lot higher um let's just bring those there get the height going on so we meet the top and bottom okay that'll do us and you see the center of those spheres aren't exactly right in the middle but let's um let's go into this view and see what we can see okay so we need to bring the sphere radius down 
cylinder radius at least so okay so there we are okay so we brought that right down that's fine now we can make this cloner editable take these cylinders out the cloner get rid of that copy all these cylinders grab the body connect object and delete we'll make sure that the things are moving mesh um oh excuse me i was gonna sneeze <coughs> oh, excuse me okay so now we've got the body it's all one object um but they are going through these spheres now so um yes we need name this to its body again make sure the connector's got what we need in it okay so we need the body in there now there we go so these should explode yeah there you go they didn't like that didn't like that at all right okay so let's ignore collisions then that's fine but they all fall through and obviously if i put a limit on these connectors um, so the lower z and the and that one they will sort of yeah that's not what we want it's because it clones this connector it being in the cloner so we do not want that we want them to react nicely but obviously they're exploding so the thing we can do is take the sphere object uh, turn off the cloner for a minute and we can make this editable excuse me and then what we can do is we can select the top and bottom polys of this object and delete them like so so we've got a hole running through the middle delete that and uh let me see if you press u l you go into loop mode and we can select this loop here and this loop here i'm holding shift to select multiple loops and then what i'm going to need is my stitch and sew tool if i grab this here and connect it to that uh, that's not what we want actually we, i think you need to hold shift if i remember rightly yeah and then you get this running all the way through the middle which is fine now obviously it's not the prettiest looking sphere in the world but if we um, get a subdivision surface and put that into the null as well and then uh, above the sphere make the sphere a child of that it actually sort of makes it a look, look a little bit more pretty bring that down one yeah, maybe we'll leave it at that now you don't need to worry about the fact that this might have dynamics going on on it because uh, all the dynamics are actually happening on the lower res version of that which is there and also if we did want to as well we could uh um make control line cuts because obviously that dips in quite quite far there so in fact let's do that uh should we yes let's just use the knife it's nice and quick okay so plane mode uh not that direction we want the no nope. there we go there's the direction we want so if we make some control line cuts just there that's fine let's test that by oh did i make a cut no turn on the subdivision surface you can see that it's uh if i undo the cut so if i you can see the difference between this and i have to make the cut again and this so let's do that again at the bottom this wasn't meant to be a modeling tutorial but i will and there we go come out of that go back into object mode and we've got our lovely looking subdivision ball now and now we can turn the cloner back on and everything should be in place now i'm hoping if there's enough clearance which there seems to be we'll make sure that this is all set to a moving mesh so it's not on automatic shape that everything should work it does we've got a little bit of slowdown there and it's probably due to the fact that this is a moving mesh and so is this let's turn off the subdivision surface see what we get yeah we get a little it's getting a little bit stuck there 
Um, so maybe what we can do is... Okay, this is set to moving mesh, blah, blah, blah. That's set to moving mesh as well. Um, maybe if we go up to our project settings and go to dynamics, we can actually make the uh, steps per frame higher. So they're 10 and the maximum solver iterations per step, make that 20, just double them. And see if this helps and play that. Okay, they seem to be figuring themselves out a little bit better now. And this is just because there's so many polys on the screen, I think. But it, it really shouldn't be taking in that into consideration. No, it's not. Let's see if uh, bringing the subdivision levels down. In fact, they don't even need to be on in the scene at all, really. Okay, but well that can be zero in the editor. Oh, you had a little bit of a brain fart there. But again, that'll be something that um, a few teething problems maybe. Let's have a look at the connector, make sure there's no, oh, we've got limits there. Let's take those off. Uh, maybe take the bounce of these objects down a little bit as well. So we've got this uh, in the dynamics tab of the balls there. We can actually put the bounce down slightly and then we'll put the friction right down so they can slide. That's a lot better. It was the friction that was the issue. And we've got something going on there as well. We've got the connector. Okay. That's fine. Now let's do what we did last time and animate this. So we've got that there, and then at about nine seconds, which is there. I'll flip this around and maybe even tilt it back and cache that. There we go. And that should all work lovely. We're going to fall back down. Yeah, there we go. So all, all well and good there. Um, just by adjusting that friction, uh, we've got a nicer result there. In fact, we can even do that on the collision one as well. So if we um, turn down the friction to zero, um, we've still got a bit of bounce going on. Not, not so much now. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so there you go. I mean, that's covered quite a few of those in one go there. We've got the slider, the twist slider, plane art and box, and uh, give you a quick example of how you could use the slider. Um, yeah, so there you go. All right, guys, um, that's the end of that uh, tutorial. I hope it was helpful in some kind of way. Um, as usual, check out the Facebook page, Digital Meet 3D. Same for the Twitter as well. Um, and if you could please help support Digital Meet uh, and keep it running, uh, allows me to keep these videos coming. Go to um, the Redbubble merch store. Uh, I've also got a Patreon page set up and a donation button on the About page. There'll be links to all of those, including the social media, um, in the description of the video. So. Sign up, check it out, and show your support. Cheers, guys. Bye.